Yeah. Yeah. And we overdo it too fast. Yes. There's no doubt about it. Right. I mean, the, the data is there. I mean, it's pretty obvious that yeah. it's created a problem. But, you know, well, the other thing I think about the microbiome that gets un- is way underappreciated is its role in neuroinflammation. You know, when we when we talked about, I hope you had at least three three people listen to my talks the last couple of talks we did. You guys did get a <laughs> way bit of more than feedback. that. Way more than that. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure because it, because I'm going to pull back on GLP ones. Okay, so. You know, what we know is, you know, the, the higher the blood sugar, the more the disruption to the brain, right? Yes, you get right. type three diabetes. Right. But the other piece to it is, is as your gut gets permeable, so goes your blood brain barrier. And when your blood brain barrier right. gets permeable, now all those nanoparticles. So when you read about Parkinson's, for example, and gee, how is it being so strongly associated with environmental burden? Mm -hmm. And then you'd start to tie together the fact that the gut is signaling the brain, the brain is signaling the gut, the microbiome is in charge of that signaling. Mm -hmm. And so what is the microbiome? It's all the beneficial bacteria that should help your body maintain homeostasis and vitality as you're aging. We know for a fact that centarians have much lower levels of you know, basically inflammatory compounds, but lower levels of lipopolysaccharide and galactin than people that are you know, younger and have health problems already. 